255, 255 and the all uh, great hymns of faith. Okay, number 255, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. You know he's yours, I hope you do if you're here today. If not, I well, find out today. Number 255. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a Lord takes the glory be mine. Heir of salvation. Savior. You ever, I, I used to enjoy that when I was working, like in, well, even here, working in the school and uh, working in the military and working these different places, because you, you ought to see the way people respond when you're, you're doing some job or something happens. You say, praise the Lord! Glory to God! That's wonderful, you know? And the people kind of, <laughs> well, at least they kept all the other ones out of our from voicing their opinions, because uh, I remember when I used to walk into my shop out there in uh, Whidbey Island, Washington, and it, somebody'd say, "Preacher's here, clean it up." <laughs> I, well, it ought to be clean anyway, but uh, they were going to they were going to hear the good things of the Lord, and I think so many people don't don't even know uh, just what you know what it means to say Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And uh, it, it wonders because we get these new modern contemporary Christian songs and many of the people are lost that are singing them. And they, you say, do they even know what hallelujah means? Do they know what, what they're singing? You know, uh, well, if you're not spiritually discerned, if you're not saved, why uh, do you have some problems in that area? Well, anyway, know the Lord Jesus Christ. Know the Father through him. How wonderful it is. And the Holy Spirit will indwell you. 
take you through all the way to glory. Blessed assurance. Number 354. Let's see, 354. What a friend we have in Jesus. I hope you have that friend personally. Amen. 354. see the words and read them we don't uh, try to rush through things we just want the whole message of God given to us and with understanding you know it says we should sing with understanding so I trust that you're reading and you're getting understanding from these old hymns amen <clears throat> I've been in churches where it was uh, if the temple wasn't uh, a basic uh, rock beat why well, you didn't you couldn't uh, sing it right you know it was a, you couldn't keep up with it you couldn't know what the words were you just had to uh, do the thing that they always do at those churches and so uh, I wasn't well pleased but I'm thankful that God has given us a group of people that like the old hymns and like to sing with understanding and get some blessing from the stuff amen <clears throat> 261 261, trust and obey. Uh, no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. If you're saved, then trust and obey. Amen. We'll sing the chorus after the last stanza. So five stanzas and then the chorus. When we walk with the Lord in the light, Yeah. 
Let's go ahead and sing that one now, too. See, you know, we, we can change these songs and things. So we make the bulletins up, and we can change them. And we can sing them in the order we want, too. Uh, it's not like this is something that is uh, carved in granite. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and sing that. Jesus loves even me, and we'll have the have our special then a little bit later. <clears throat> Compliment today. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Psalm 18. Psalm 18. We could spend hours in Psalm 18, and I'm planning on only spending this hour in it. We'll see how the Lord goes. We can always pick it up again another time. See how many verses we'll look at as we go through Psalm 18. <clears throat> again, uh, I mentioned last hour just the hymns of grace and I don't know, I just saw that once on the YouTube. And it, uh, 
there was a title on that one that I saw, Symphony of Psalms Concert. It was over an hour and a half long of singing and reading the Psalms. Uh, it was quite well done by a, a large choir and their orchestra. Uh, and they expounded a lot on the music and how we got where we are that we have these great hymns, uh, these, this music, the hymns that we can sing from the Bible, uh, all this stuff that they uh, had been used as the songbook of Israel for so many years. So in Psalm 18 now, there's 50 verses in this, and you see in your Bible, you should have a paragraph <laughs> written above right after Psalm 18 before verse one that says something like, to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, and so we see that's the beginning in the Psalms, what we saw in 2 Samuel 22. Now, uh, he begins now, first of all, look at, it's from the servant of the Lord. The servant of the Lord. Uh, he uses that, that's a, a, a title. Uh, here was King David, and yet he was the servant of the Lord. It, it just... Uh, puts extra emphasis on this song that was written as to what his status was, where he was as king of Israel, and yet he's the one that is extolling God and is magnifying God uh, as being the great God that had accomplished all these things for his kingdom's sake. And so David uh, was very uh, well done in writing this. Uh, he served him because he was selected by God to be the king. He was approved by God. And so God knew in his mercy that that's what he wanted. He wanted David to reign. If you remember when he uh, had the prophet go out and choose uh, the son of Jesse. And all he went through all of them and said, no, no, none of them are here. Aren't there any others? Oh yeah, there's the shepherd boy out in the field. And so go get him. And he was anointed. Uh, <clears throat> So he uses all this uh, poetic uh, descriptions in here that we, we saw last hour and we'll look at this more in depth now as we go through Psalm 18, uh, Psalm 18. Uh, so he begins in verse one now, having the introduction already done, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Uh, what a thing to start with such a tender, compassionate thing as God's love. I will love thee, uh, O Lord, my strength. God is his strength, and so he loves him just as God loves King David. And so all through this, David understands that. Uh, David is just overwhelmed with the Lord's blessings in his life. And he gives a summary here in this, uh, this part of scripture or in 2 Samuel's where he gave the summary of what God had done for him. Verse two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Um, David, just looking at what God is, he's everything to, to David. Uh, he's somebody that you can just rely on. You can, he is trustworthy. You know that you can trust in God. You can give him uh, uh, any, anything to deal with and you can trust him with it. Isn't that something? That's our God. And so David recognizes that. And what he is, he calls him the rock, fortress, deliverer, strength, buckler, horn of his salvation, high tower, uh, all these things. Remember the rock. Moses went up and God, uh, it can be a hiding place. Uh, the cleft of the rock. And so Moses was put in the cleft of the rock as the Lord uh, passed by and allowed him to, to see him uh, pass by there. And so it's a, it can be a place 
where you are concealed. It can be that place where you can always go uh, when you don't know where else to go. Be with the Lord. The uh, strength, the rock, immovable. There's not anything you're gonna do to that rock. That rock is eternal and you better be on it 